from Community Public Radio, this is the CPR News. From New York, I'm Don DeBar. Today we go to Esteli in Nicaragua to speak with Stephen Sefton. Uh, We're going to begin today taking a look at a case that just turns my stomach, really. It's, you know, the U.S. government can really embarrass the hell out of you uh, in some ways, looking at some of the most absurd, hypocritical, contradictory, just horrible things that they do. But the case of Alex Saab, who's a... Uh, was traveling with a Venezuelan diplomatic passport um, <clears throat> between uh, Venezuela and Iran, was hijacked during the Trump administration, uh, clearly by uh, the hand of Elliot Abrams, and uh, is now uh, being shipped to or, or has arrived at uh, the United States uh, for trial uh, for trying to feed the people of his country, basically, at the behest of his government for violating American laws that have nothing to do, that are illegal, first of all, facially, that purport to impose a legal regime on the government and people of Venezuela and its relations with the people and government of Iran and found an ally in Africa to help them prosecute this case. And and again, Abrams is the nexus point, apparently. So let's talk about that, Stephen. Well, yeah, Don, and and the... For people outside the United States, and I'm sure for a substantial number of people inside the United States, and this is just the latest example of the fact that the United States government is probably the most successful organized crime syndicate on the planet. And one of the only ones with nuclear weapons, too, by the way. One, I might say. Yeah, and they're they're made up of a, a bunch of gangsters and war criminals now I and mean, just just look at the what the the people are responsible the people in the US government have been responsible for over decades right you no know, I'm going way back now into genocidal massacres of millions of people in in Asia in Korea and Vietnam for example right. and so um, Kidnapping a, 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 a Venezuelan diplomat is very small beer in right, terms yeah, right. <laughs> of, of, yeah. of U.S. criminal wrongdoing over, over over the last century or more. You know, these are the people who will wag their finger at anyone talking about the uh, rules-based order and rule of law and all of this nonsense. And here they are essentially trashing. I don't know how how old is the uh, Concept, tradition, and law of uh, treating diplomats, uh, what, hundreds of years old anyway, perhaps a thousand years old, where they, you know, they pull over a president's plane uh, like like he was uh, drunk driving in uh, Hollywood or something. Remember, they did what, with Hugo Chavez, uh, no, with uh, um, uh, Evo Morales, yeah. And, uh, and, and this guy is, is traveling from his country to another country on official business. His plane stops to refuel in a, in a country that apparently is one of AFRICOM's uh, partners, quote unquote. And they pull him off the plane, throw him in jail, torture him, do all kinds of ho- He says, I was tortured physically and psychologically, both by the U.S. and Cape Verde governments. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and, and now they're shipping him to the United States to stand trial. Yeah, and, and and it's worth bearing in mind, I think, that um, the case of Alex Saab is very... Uh, you, you mentioned Evo Morales' plane being high, uh, forced down um, on, it, on, a, on a return journey from Moscow. And the pretext was that the US authorities feared that Julian Assange might be aboard that plane. And so, I, I, and that, but you know, I, I just bring that up because the case of Julian Assange is another case, right? Of, uh, a, a totally submissive U.S. ally in the United Kingdom. Well, several. First, we had Sweden. They issued the uh, warrants, as you recall, right? And uh, at, at the behest of the United States, they're totally made up, as it turns out. Uh, and then uh, 
the the UK government, uh, which has been torturing him, and you know, uh, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. It just it turns my yeah, stomach. Really, it, it, you're you're right. And uh, but and I think the two cases are both emblematic of the complete disregard of by the countries of the European Union. The European Union could very very easily uh, at different points in the Julian Assange case have stepped in and. Uh, either behind the scenes or overtly to put an end to that charade and they didn't um, and likewise I mean, they, have, they haven't said a peep so as far as I can see about what's been done to Alex Saar right. um, either over his, the, the, the immediate uh, rendition kidnapping that has just taken place over the last couple of days or uh, by his original detention back in June 2020. And mm. the, the European Union authorities have, have not done anything to protest the mistreatment of uh, Alex Saab and the, the, the violation of, his di- of, of the, 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 the whole principle of diplomatic immunity that his treatment represents. Mm. And so, you know, and you, you have the European Union and the, and the United States, as you say, posing as the arbiters, the international arbiters for human rights and the rule of law. Um, and they're actually themselves the, the worst offenders, the, the kind of eternal recidivists, you know, and they, they're constantly uh, breaking the rules that they say they, they defend. And it's just total cynical hypocrisy. I mean, but we're in, but we've been do- we've all our practically all our conversations over the last few years about Latin America and the Caribbean, Don, have been have reflected that fact, you know. And so this, this latest incident with Alex Saab, while it is outrageous and scandalous and cause for, you know, c- completely justified indignation, it's just par for the course as far as the United States government and its European allies are concerned. Yeah. So, and, and it has significance on, on all kinds of levels, I think, because, and I think it does represent the fact that uh, the United States and its allies are undergoing an ex- what is for them an extremely traumatic, long drawn out strategic defeat. And uh, one of the things that Elliot Abrams commented on in relation to the case of Alex Saar is that. Um, it was a way of punishing the Maduro regime. Now, I, I just think about that for a minute. Yep. I, the United States government, the most powerful military force on the planet, according to its own propaganda. Right. And its budget. And, and so, so Not forget the budget. The most, uh, powerful uh, financial uh, and, and trading player on the planet. Although that's on, as far as trade goes, they probably ceded that position now to the People's Republic of China. Right. But certainly they remain the strongest financial power uh, on, on the planet for the moment still. And what Elliot, what their, what their uh, a leading uh, functionary of their, 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 their government said is that by uh, targeting this individual, Alex Saab, a, 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 a diplomat, um, that somehow the United States is punishing Venezuela by, by targeting this individual. Now that's, you know, that, that just doesn't make sense. It makes no sense, except in the most petty, vindictive way. If the United States were a genuine superpower, it would, it would take action. You no, know, it would invade Venezuela or it would, you know, do all kinds of things. But one thing that it probably wouldn't even worry much about at all is whether or not they go after an individual like Alex Saab. Right. So that you know, the, the, the arrest of Alex Saab back in June 2020, and I, I remember thinking at the time that it signaled the de, another definitive ratchet, ratchet down in the decline of the United States as a, a, a global power or even as a regional power, you know? Right. In terms of, if you ask the question, can the United States get its way in Latin America? The answer now is no, it can't. It can't, it can't do anything about Cuba, um, apart, except apart from a, 
uh, applying the extremely damaging sanctions that haven't worked for 60 years. Can't do anything about Venezuela except subject its people to um, extremely damaging hardship that to date, uh, according to some estimates, has caused the death uh, as a result of medical privations of about 100,000 uh, people in, 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 in Venezuela. So I mean, it can do all those kind of sly, nasty, underhand things. But what it can't pretend anymore is that it's the dominant power in Latin America and the Caribbean. Right. It's just not. And the, and, the, and the Alex Saab case demonstrates that. Yeah. And however, however obnoxious it is and however unjust it is, it does have the, the positive meaning that the United States is finished as the dominant power in Latin America and the Caribbean. There's something else, too. I do not see the point of entering into a treaty with the United States anymore. I'm looking at Article 29 of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, adopted in 1961. Article 29. Diplomats must not be liable to any form of arrest or detention, period. They are immune from civil or criminal prosecution, though the sending country, that would be Venezuela in this case, may waive this right under Article 32, which they did not. Now, under Article 31.1c, there's an exemption, and, and this is where I'm sure the U.S. is making a claim, because they're claiming that money laundering, actions not covered by diplomatic immunity would be professional activity outside of diplomats' official functions. So they're going to claim it's impossible for this official to have violating U.S. law as an official function. Otherwise, what you're doing is imputing criminal activity to the entire Venezuelan state. But you have Elliot Abrams' comment on exactly how he intends to use that thing that mitigates this excuse for an exemption here. I mean, it's clear that they're directly violating Article 29 willfully in front of the world. Now, who yeah. in the hell would enter into a contract with someone that treats a contract that way? Well, they're submissive. They're submissive regional allies, right? You know, I, and 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 perhaps later on we'll be able to talk about a couple of those uh, submissive regional allies that um, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is 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 visiting. Um, uh, yesterday he was in Ecuador. Today he's in Colombia. But I'm the going back to what you're saying. I know it, they. It's possible the United States made kind of play legal games and, and, and try and cite uh, some kind of international precedent right. relating to diplomatic rules. But I'm the, as I understand it, the, has the United States formally recognized uh, President Maduro as, as the legitimate president? Because they, I, if, I don't think they have. I think they still pretend that Guaido. the ridiculous clown usurper Juan Guaido is the Venezuelan <laughs> president. And so they'll say, well, we don't recognize that Alex Saab was, in fact, uh, the diplomat of, uh, of the legitimate government of Venezuela, whose president is Juan Guaido. I think Guaido <laughs> left Venezuela. My understanding is that he's gone to Ukraine and take the place of Zelensky in the TV show that Zelensky used to star in <laughs> as president of Ukraine. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, he 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 has a he'll have a very successful career in front of him in uh, any of the the various circuses that tour Latin America as a clown. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so, but I mean, you see, but that it that also demonstrates the absurdity of and the pathetic the pathetic absurdity. Of, of 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 U.S. official positions and European Union official positions in relation to um, events in Latin America and the Caribbean and elsewhere. So, and, agreed. And, and it may sound as though I'm, I'm downplaying what has happened to Alex Saab. Of course, it's a a very very serious breach of. Uh, of, of fundamental human rights, very serious breach of international law, but the United States has never worried about that. Right. And the, the, the only time they've ever worried about that kind of thing has been as a fig leaf to be able to 
give some kind of legal or diplomatic cover to doing what they want to do. Right. No, and that, and that, and that, and but now the the Alex Saab case does bring out even more than ever before the fact that the United States and its European uh, uh, allies, uh, especially the European Union, um, are essentially gangster organisations who work on the gangster logic: do what we want or else. Right. Why? Yeah, and that's what they are. And people, and I, and I think we've got to stop talking about these either the governments or the individuals in those governments as if there's some kind of uh, as if they have any kind of legitimacy they don't here this is cute i'm looking at the press release i'm sorry i'm looking at the press release from the department of justice here the justice department in the united states this is monday here's how they characterize this capture this kidnapping of a venezuelan uh, ambassador Alex Nayan Saab Moran, 49, a Colombian citizen, will make his initial appearance in federal court in Miami, Florida today, again, this Monday, after being extradited from the Republic of Cabo Verde. He's charged in an indictment with laundering the proceeds of violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act in connection with a scheme to pay bribes to take advantage of Venezuela's government-controlled exchange rate. So they're enforcing Venezuela's law against a Colombian citizen by having an African country partner in AFRICOM kidnap him and ship him to the United States for prosecution. No, that, that, that statement is an outrageous lie. Yep. He was not extradited. There, there was no due legal process of any kind the, uh, in, in, in Alex Saab's case. And Alec, the, 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 the Cape Verde government was ordered by the the regional West African court to which to, which, which is bound to obey under the treaties um, that he has ratified as a government um, it was ordered by that that West African court to release Alex Saab and pay him compensation and they just ignored that um, so the, the the it's a complete lie by the U.S. government to say that they extradited Alex Saab. They did not extradite mm. him, as you put it perfectly correctly. They kidnapped him. Um, and there, there was zero uh, legitimate judicial process involved at all. I don't think they even even went through the motions of, uh, of, of completing any kind of extradition procedure. Mm-mm-mm. So that, that's just a downright lie. But I mean, and that just bears out what we're saying. I mean, the United States government is a criminal organization um, that uh, acts in the interests of whoever it's the the oligarch elites are that that that, that, that give it uh, the instructions about what to do, and and that's and that's what it is. And, and right. it's it's so foolish of people to treat the United States as if it were some kind of uh, I don't know, legitimate authority. I know, but you're right. It's, it's like the mob. It's, <laughs> it's like the it's Sicilian, a- uh, what do you call it? Here, this is the New York Times, December 22nd of last year. For the past month, the Navy cruiser San Jacinto had sailed off the West African island nation of Cape Verde on a secret mission aimed at helping deal a major blow to President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela. The mission was set in motion in early June when Alex Saab, a Colombian businessman who is widely believed to be the architect of the economic deals that are keeping the Maduro government afloat, that means the people of Venezuela afloat, was arrested in Cape Verde when his private plane stopped to refuel en route to Iran from Venezuela. The U.S. sought his extradition under American money laundering charges, they had to make something up because they needed to cite that exemption from a treaty. Yeah, Don, it, and it's worth pointing out that those charges have no legitimacy outside right. the United States. Absolutely right. And he wasn't in the United States, and he didn't do them in the United States. They claim jurisdiction because they say when he was money laundering, as they charge, um, back uh, having to do with housing deals that help Venezuela build housing 
during the sanctions period that he was convert using the conversion rate to U.S. dollars as a benchmark, and consequently they claimed jurisdiction because of the U.S. currency being used as a benchmark. I mean, yeah, and, how remote can you get? Yeah, and and the, and the, the, the cynicism and, and, and deceit just goes on and on and on. I and mean, they accuse Alex Saab, for example, of stealing millions of dollars from Venezuela's people um, uh, who, whom they say uh, are suffering hardship as a result of what Alex Saab has done. This is just one more example of the innumerable examples, the infinite number of examples, if you like, of the way the United States authorities and their uh, servile subservient media, both corporate and alternative, turn the truth on its head. Uh, they, 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 it's the United States that has inflicted incredible hardship on Venezuela's people, causing the deaths of at least 100,000 people as a result of medical and food um, shortages caused by United States sanctions. But they turn around and say that the person that was enabling Venezuela's people to circumvent those sanctions and, and get access to, uh, to medicines, get access to food, get access to essential um, uh, uh, parts and, 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 and maintenance uh, inputs that Venezuela needed for its oil industry from Iran. Um, get access to uh, essential fuel that uh, for a time Venezuela uh, wasn't able to supply to its own people and Iran sent them five tanker loads of, of fuel. All of that was facilitated by Alex Saab. Right. And that is why the United States want to uh, target right. and, and hurt and damage Alex Saab. Right. Because and targeting Alex Saab isn't going isn't to do anything to make U.S. policy towards Venezuela more successful. And they've already, they've already worked out with Iran and China and, and the Russian Federation, how uh, the, the Venezuelan authorities, I mean, how they're going to um, overcome the sanctions, which they are doing successfully. And one shouldn't call them sanctions, because in, in, international, in terms of international law, the only uh, legitimate sanctions that can be applied are those approved by the UN Security Council. What we're actually talking about are illegal unilateral coercive measures applied uh, in an outlaw fashion by the United States government. And that's what we're talking about. Alex Saab um, was a key person um, in uh, facilitating the means for the Venezuelan people to overcome those illegal coercive uh, measures. Um, now the United States has kind of uh, vindictively kidnapped him, but that's not going to change anything in Venezuela. They're going to still they're still going to uh, act in a way that progressively means they defeat uh, U.S. sanctions against the country. They're going to hold elections in November that will elect. Uh, 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 I think it's the elections are for all the municipalities and all the uh, regional governments in Venezuela. They're going to hold those elections successfully, right. despite the fact that the United States has tried to sabotage them. No, and the United States policy in Venezuela is a pathetic failure. In fact, it's overall policy in, in Latin America. Uh, it, although it's had in in from the point of view of the US government, it's had uh, some limited successes. Uh, um, overall, US policy in Latin America and the Caribbean is, is, is a pathetic failure. Well, I mean, you have to... They, 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 you have to like use these terms in reference to the to the actual goals, whether this is a, a failure or a success. The goals of the United States were articulated. It'll be 198 years this December second by by President Madison, and and that is essentially that this is our sphere of influence. Everybody keep out. This is our backyard, and we're gonna you know we're gonna cut the lawn back here as we wish. And, and it's been a success as far as that goes with, of course, contradictions everywhere that the people assert control over their own governments and their own lives, their own economies, their own cultures. The United States pushes back as hard as it can 
And rather than it being a straight push on either side, there's give and take that's been happening. The trend over time, certainly, as Martin Luther King said, tends towards justice. But uh, and, and, and so these concepts of sovereignty, self-determination, you know, and all of that, uh, you know, enriching and, and uh, developing the economies and such, they are gaining. But the United States is pulling out every stop whenever it can. To, to, to thwart that. That's what their policy is. And Elliot Abrams, I mean, this case couldn't be more obvious. Elliot Abrams was a special envoy for Iran and Venezuela and to the African Union. And so you have an African country kidnap this guy who's acting as an envoy from Venezuela to Iran to stop Iran and Venezuela from trading so they can both starve. Yeah, Alex, uh, he was that special representative. Yeah, and, and maybe this is a, 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 a moment to look at and what I regard as another example of um, another demonstration of the failure of U.S. power in, in the region. And, and it may seem paradoxical to talk about that, yeah. to talk in those terms. Yeah. But it does. It does seem to me that you know, if the United States w- were uh, uh, the dominant power in Latin America and the Caribbean, it would not be doing the things it's doing. It would right. be doing other things. Right. It would be doing other, more aggressive and more assertive things. Right. Right. The and United so, States is the, isn't the dominant power because the people of of, La- of Latin America are the dominant power, and they they're starting to you know clear their pipes and uh and 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 find ways to stand up in the face of the u.s and i think that's what the real contradiction is we got about uh, two minutes left you want maybe you could sum it up yeah no i'm, I'm just quickly i and anthony blinken the u.s secretary of state is visiting um ecuador and colombia um and what he's talking about is he's practically begging them um not to be nice to china you know and, and he's, 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 <laughs> he's suggesting that they should put their ties to the United States before their interests in rela- their economic interests in relation to uh, trading with and having relations with the People's Republic of China. Mm. You know, that, that's, that's what U.S. diplomacy has been reduced to. That's amazing. And, they, and, and they, they, they can't get their way in Venezuela, can't get their way in Cuba, can't get their way in Mexico, can't get their way in Nicaragua, can't get their way in Peru. Right. In Colombia, the people are on the streets demanding a uh, systemic change. They, the people in Chile, the same, and they've gone some. They've made some progress towards ob- ob- achieving that objective. You know, and, and the, the United right. States is is no longer the dominant regional power in Latin America and the Caribbean. Yep, and and not only that, by the way, <laughs> looking forward. As Venezuela and Iran uh, deepen relations, despite this uh, effort by the U.S. to block that, Iran has become a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which means it has very close economic relationships being developed with China and all of the nations in the SCO, uh, which means that Iran and Venezuela's nexus point will not just be one between Iran and Venezuela, but one between Venezuela and the SCO, meaning China and all of the other members. And that means the U.S. sanctions are bound to fail even more miserably over time. Yeah, yeah, I think that's absolutely right, Tom. And let's hope we see it in our lifetimes. Yep, absolutely. All right, Stephen, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure speaking with you as always, and we will catch up with you next week. I guess we'd better start talking about the election in Nicaragua next week. Yeah, I know, and yeah, and the, 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 there's always far too much to talk about. Let's see if we have some in Nicaragua. Yeah, very good. Okay, take care. Thank you. And that's all the news we have for you right now. For Community Public Radio, I'm Don DeBar in New York. Thanks for listening. <laughs>